Hey everybody, welcome back to Intel Extreme Masters in Shenzhen, China. We're getting ready for our last quarterfinal match between RDU and Xiao Soul, where that will be our last match of the day. We've been running late. Uh, the venue has been shutting down the lights, as you even saw in the closing moments of Amaz versus Masan. And so we're going to pick up what, the rest of it tomorrow for the semifinals and the finals. RDU versus Xiao Soul. Guys, what do we think about this matchup? RDU seems to be the favorite, but every time I'm ready to peg somebody as a favorite, I get surprised. Well, it's an interesting matchup for sure. Like, RDU is chasing Amaz, who actually just uh, took over the first place in the world. So, well, he has... RDU is always bringing interesting ideas to the to the fold. Like, he's changing his decks a bit. Like, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that we, we won't see the Miracle Rogue because he's playing uh, Perdition's Blade. But uh, he's he's playing a Token Druid, I know for sure. Uh, Warrior. I, we haven't seen his Warrior because it was banned before. So, it, was, it will be cool to see it. Yeah, already you told us we we've only seen two of his decks so far, so there's quite a lot of decks we don't know what he's playing yet. Like and he has nobody. a warlock, right? Also, he does. Have I think warlock. we might know his classes, but we don't know whether it's giants right. or zoo even, and we he's don't know. He's capable of doing both. Yeah, exactly. A of all kinds, he's played, you know, aggro mage, freeze mage, zoo, handlock, that kind of mm -hmm. dynamic he's capable of. Uh, both of these guys have banned rogue from their opponents, and both of them will be playing druid, warrior, and warlock in some sequence. I think oh, okay. we'll see zoo. Because like if you ban warlock like, from both players, Miracle or just Rogue both? is good versus Zoo, and bad versus Handlock. Like bad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you ban Miracle Ro Rogue, it's possible that you actually play Zoo with Laura Walker Cho. <laughs> don't play Laura Walker Cho. Oh, we've seen Laura Walker Cho before. It's not, it's I, so bad. I actually it's tried. It's a bad not card. Good. What do you got against? I've Laura actually Cho? seen like. Um, People draw five cards off the rocket show, and they're all <laughs> useless because you just draw like fan knives as the zoo. And why do you need fan knives? You know, you like it might seem like you're drawing a lot of cards, but all the cards you're drawing are useless. But if you get like extra doom stuff, guard, <laughs> extra doom guard to discard. <laughs> I guess every little bit might help. Feeds the doom guard. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I guess. Okay, Shan So if he's playing handlock, uh, Shao Sol does play handlock. That's for sure. We know that he plays the weird cards. We've seen also his Druid. Uh, we did see his Miracle Rogue, but we haven't seen his Warrior. Where am I being intriguing? Do you think like he will be playing more like a Kit Kat's Midrange Warrior or something that Moon played before with um, more like a Midrange? Like the Argent Commanders, the Yetis. Yeah, it's kind of like an aggro, but not really. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, it's interesting It'll take. probably it's be a controller because it's just a lot more common to see, but it, it might be that Midrange Warrior. Yeah. It depends because again the meta in Asia has been generally very yeah. aggro, and you know the the warrior if you kind of scale back mid range to deal with some of these creatures earlier then you'd be able to be more effective but you do scale back your late game. Well, I actually, think that face warrior is actually a little bit more common than mid range warrior. Like you see some with leper gnome and sure, sure. Uh, just leper gnome. All, all leper gnome tells you everything. <laughs> like you learn so much by Probably everyone's turn it. one as soon as yeah, they play leper gnome. leper gnome. Argent squire is yeah. a little bit ambiguous. Sometimes it might be mid range even if you see it on a paladin, but. Leopard Gnome, you know exactly what kind of deck There's also is. a build the like Tides of Time was running with like Leroy and Arcanite Reaper. Sure. Also yeah. kind of an like, interesting build that's more aggro-ish, but still a control. Yeah. I, I like the... I mean, Warrior is very flexible. And, you know, you brought up Kit Kats. He is a player that always says if Warrior is able to understand what his matchup is and prepare accordingly, oh, also, he has the tools to succeed. If one, because um, we've seen some people are already copying Clento's lists. You know, and we've seen, Paladin? Yeah, we've seen people play Clento's Pally, and Clento has this Warrior that he streamed where it was Imp Master, Battle Rage. It was like a lot of synergy like that, and ah, it's interesting to see maybe weird. one of them are playing that <laughs> Warrior. Wait, another cool. Colento build? Yeah, maybe. Does he play we like Injured Blade Master too in that? And then like uh, Battle Rage or something? I think I saw Injured Blade Master, wow, but I'm not sure. that's not bad. Yeah, I, Battle I like Rage, Imp Master. And then like Fobbing Berserker benefits off the Frothing. Injured Blade Master injuring himself, <laughs> and he's yeah. a 3-4. Yeah, what? Yeah. It, my, it was, it was, like <laughs> a, it was a crazy sick. amount of synergy. Oh my God. I saw him stream it once, and he was actually playing it like... Because he's always high legend, so he's playing at a pretty high in legend. He was, he wasn't really climbing with it, but he was kind of breaking even. So he's he still doing pretty good with it. He he wasn't cool. climbing with it while streaming, right? He was playing it while streaming. Uh, okay, he was playing it yeah. while streaming. Because Kalento plays a lot of games like while off stream. Yeah, yeah. So it's possible that he's actually playing that deck to get to the first place legend <laughs> at EU. Yes. If you ever ask yourself what would Kalento do, it'd probably be playing Hearthstone. 
<laughs> yeah, basically. Because you think the guy never rests. He streams. He's himself playing Hearthstone, and when he's done like streaming, he plays Hearthstone. In the yeah, he's always playing. The guy is an absolute beast. Uh, RDU and Shao So. Let's come back to this main point. Uh, it is a best of five now, and RDU is extremely, extremely confident. He's told me multiple times over that he's imagined the scenarios over. He writes down all of his classes uh, of his opponents, and he studies it like crazy. Uh, I, I would be very hard pressed to imagine him not going to the semifinals. But again, we've been seeing that it's really hard to predict how these series goes. You played against Shao So. What was your feeling? I'm talking to Strife Crow. Yeah. Uh, what was your feeling on Shao So's skill level relative to everyone else that you've seen so far in the top eight? Well, when I fought Shao So in the group stage, I, I think he was he was definitely a lot stronger than the first player I played, the other Chinese player in the group. Um, I actually went 2 1. I believe I won, drew it against his handlock. And then, and then your shaman. Yeah, and then the shaman. The shaman. Uh, I lost Jordan at Mirror. But yeah, I think I can't really tell from playing somebody really because without seeing his cards, it's hard to see whether he's making misplays or he just has a bad hand. He did silence that totem. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a misplay. <laughs> oh, instead of killing it with the keeper of the grove. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, it's okay. We all make mistakes. Yeah. I think Shao So. I think he does have a chance, but we do have to kind of peg RDU as the favorite. Uh, again, we haven't seen too much of RDU's warrior, but he also says that he's a warrior specialist as well. In fact, RDU says RDU's, he's a specialist at everything. In general, RDU is on a roll. Like, he got high place in DreamHack. Then he won DreamHack Summer. He's winning Zodex. Right. He won versus Ecop on the King of the Hill. He got second in Well Played Cup. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like, this guy is really deserving what he gets right now. He's playing a lot. He's practicing a lot. He started streaming recently. So... I'm really looking forward to what, what what can he bring. Like he's playing all the decks, so he's trying not to focus only on one class and be one class specialist, but be uh, flexible and like be able to play every class to, on the on the highest level. And he's really into the game. He's also like studying the game uh, as much as possible. That's an understatement. Whenever we're, wherever we're going, whether we're eating, whether I'm I'm. He, I'm showing him where the bathroom is. We're just talking about Hearthstone and talking about what classes, <laughs> what's good against here. What did this player play? How do you counter it? What do you do for deck selection preparation? The, the kid is he's obsessed still, about he's Hearthstone. He's still analyzing his past games from Brimhack. Really? To yeah, you? Yes, I mean, he was telling me about those games. <laughs> like <laughs> What he should have kept on Mulligans and what he should have done differently. Uh, and, and I think the guy just really wants to prove that he's a top caliber player. You know, we can't really ignore the elf in the room. He did have some controversy in DreamHack Summer, and he took that and said, I want to just show people again and again that I'm the that best player, play. that I'm deserving of invites, and that I'm deserving of my championship win. And what better way to kind of accent that by winning another offline tournament that he appears right afterwards. On the other hand, he's really emotional. Like, we can see on his face right now, he's pretty concerned about what's, what's going on. He's, he, he's thinking about what to play first and uh, what will be his game plan, which is pretty interesting because like normally for the card games, you want to have the poker face and not show the emotions, but here he will be in that booth not giving any emotions to his opponent so he can be as emotional as possible <laughs> and as emotional as he wants to be. Yeah, I think so. Well, we'll see how it is. You know, he's said that in the past, maybe he was nervous a couple times, but the nerves really haven't gotten to him recently. And I think he just feels confidence because he trusts his practice. Ardu has grinded hundreds and hundreds of games with his teams. He is on NYM with lots of other talented players, you know, Tice and L for, uh, in recent memory. From Netherlands. Yeah, how'd you guess? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I just know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well... Let's find out if RDU is going to be able to do it. I think we have a small delay of figuring out maybe some login issue as well. Yeah, I also think playing from the booth is actually less kind of le less nerve-wracking than playing in the open. Like, if you're playing in the open, sometimes you see a lot of people stand behind you. It, it, you know, even you though a lot talking. more people are watching you in the in the booth, like, something about the booth just, like, locks out the world, you know, for me. Yeah, you can focus on the game. Exactly. And there is no outside assistance. Well, when you're playing just uh, with the background noises, there is always this fear that somebody will just shout, like, oh my god, he just oh, yeah, got yeah, a yeah. black knight. Yeah, like, and you're worried about him revealing your cards. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. One, one guy was actually doing that, and he almost got in trouble for it. Like, cause luckily, like, he was saying it after the play, but the th fact is, like, the player could hear him right within that distance, and 
uh, you know, that does happen. People are also within touching distance. So, like, right after Masan won, there's, like, guys that, like, tap the shoulder and, like, high-five them. I'm like, dude, be careful, man, because you don't know if, like, you're coming into the series and you're kind of tampering. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a really fun journey here in IEM. We've had some issues. Uh, but in the end, end uh, we are also very respectful of people's appreciation or understanding rather and we appreciate that people have been very uh, willing to be able to bear with us throughout the issues keep in mind that tomorrow we're going to be playing the semifinals and the finals where we'll see uh, Azari, Gino, Amaz and the winner of this series battle it out for 10,000 US dollars and there's going to be more events for IEM are you guys going to come back to more IEMs in the future? Oh yeah definitely um, there will be a new IEM in Canada so we don't know the oh, details. We don't know when, though. We don't know when exactly, and we don't know if Hearthstone will be actually there. But if Hearthstone is there, I, I guess like Cloud Nine will be there. Yeah, we're definitely tr trying to travel to a lot of tournaments. I mean, we just don't know the details. That yet, means so. like Hafu should go because Hafu is pretty close to Canada, and maybe we'll see her be able to appear in an offline. Tournament. Yeah, on the offline tournament that will yeah. be exciting, definitely. And I'm I'm hyped for the IEMs in Europe as well. Like I hope we'll get like at least two before the finals. Yeah, most likely they like to host one back in Germany, like close to where they are. They ESL is based in Cologne, uh, and they probably have an Intel Extreme Masters also like somewhere around that area. I was kind of hoping that we'll get an IEM uh, at Gamescom, but I don't think they're doing one. They're not doing. They, one. they sometimes do some for like Kiev, for example, because then they uh, partner with CBIT, which is also a world convention. Lots more to do. If, again, if you guys are curious, you can go to IntelExtremeMasters.com and find out more information. Still no update from the admins on what the status is of this series. We're having some problems, and it's, it's a little bit of a problem, too, because the venue actually has shut down the lights and told <laughs> us to get the heck out. But <laughs> we're like, we have one more series. Just please let us finish it. I don't yeah, know what they're waiting for. It seems like they might have some... Some technical issues, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's hard to say. Okay, so guys, like, Strife Crew, we've seen... The, the the shaman deck from you, which was pretty <laughs> unique. Yeah, actually, we can talk about it now that the tournament's yeah, over. Yeah, sure. Now that it's over for me, I guess I can talk a little bit about it. Um, basically, I had like a really specific strategy going into the tournament. And I was actually really confident. Um, my, stra my strategy was basically to just always ban Miracle Rogue, or at least just ban Rogue, let's put it that way. Um, that way, I, I, I was able to just tilt all four of my decks in... You know, because I'm planning to always ban Miracle Rogue, I was able to tilt all four of my decks. Like, I actually had different deck lists than ladder lists, you know. Like, for example, my Miracle Rogue, I had, like, two saps, you know, make a better against Druid. Like, if, if you're banning Rogue, you're definitely just planning to play against maybe, like, Druid, Shaman, you know, Warrior. Like, stuff with a lot of creatures, you know. So, it's, like, ran two saps there, ran Zoo. Zoo is weak against Miracle Rogue. But, you know, it's pretty good against... It's really good against Shaman and Druid, I think. You know, and Warrior. Most of them, Warrior, exactly. So that's another reason why I run Zoo. Um, the Shaman... Well, also, yeah, I run my own Miracle. And then the last list we're going to talk about is the Shaman. Um, yeah, I guess, like, a lot of people were saying, you know, it's like some kind of revolutionary Shaman. I guess it's... I, I think it'd probably be a lie to call it that. It's more like because my plan specifically was to just ban Rogue. Um, I felt like I didn't. I felt like since I was gonna fight more board control matchups, say for against Druid, Shaman, Mirror, you know, Warrior, stuff like that, I was I was able to focus more on spell power. Um, you know, focusing on spell power is probably pretty bad against Miracle Rogue because most of the time they're just removing your creatures, and you kind of need to race Miracle Rogue with Shaman. Like you, you, you generally can't survive too long if they have good draws, you know, with Gadgets in. So you need like early Doomhammer, start putting in pressure. So. My my shaman was basically made to fight like a lot of the mid range uh, creature battle mirrors. And that's why I say fork lightning, like you know, ancient mage fork lightning so strong, stuff like that. So, was there something in the deck that we didn't see? Like we seen ancient mage. There was uh, there were two. Copies I have two of ancient mages. You I have like geomancer. Do you have geomancer? One geomancer. Yeah, oh like my god, there was a mage. geomancer. <laughs> Do you play like arc mage? And I'm totally no, no, like no, no. mind blasted um, right now. I think it was just those. Basically, the two Violet Teachers are big because basically the point of Fork Lightning, the reason why it's so strong in this type of deck is because, you know, most of Fork, like, most spells are kind of like half and half for Overload, maybe like a little bit more on the first turn, a little bit less on the second turn, like 3-2, but Fork does, a Fork does actually mostly backload, and, you know, um, only a bit of Fork Lightning is on the first turn you play, you know, two mana is on the next turn. So it's really good, like, to combo on the same turn. So you can say... Ancient Mage Fork Lining, or even Violet Teacher Fork Lining. Um, so, since you have, I have, I think I had eight copies of one mana spells with the Fork Lining edition. Um, that makes Violet Teacher a lot stronger. Since I'm running two Flame Tongues, 
Uh, you can you know you can even invite teacher, play some spells, and then drop a flame tongue later and just start propagating the propagating the one one. So there's That's a lot cool. of synergy in it. It's really got creature fighting as well. You don't have bloodlust in it, right? No, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we weren't sure if that was well. Actually, before the ancient mage even yeah. came out, we saw the violet teacher, in which we thought ah maybe some blood or something, but then. The ancient yeah. mage. We're like, what? Yeah. That we I, have. How did this happen? We have bloodlust in the in the final, not only the final, in the semi-final, right? Yeah. Azari yeah. plays bloodlust. A super Which, greedy shaman. With by the way, <laughs> what was your thoughts on like? Were you expecting a blood? Were you you weren't playing around bloodlust? No, at I all. wasn't playing around. I, mean, I had no idea of bloodlust. I expected a win for you after I saw Leroy after I lost first game. Um, I think first game I had some chance of a druid. Uh, there were some tough decisions I could have made. I kind of predicted turn seven you could do hex and Argus. Uh, maybe I should have charged my Druid Claw on one of the totems and played the uh, Squire instead with some of the turns. Turn 6, I maybe should have, instead of uh, Teacher Hero Power, the the 1-1 one, one Blood Mage. Maybe I could have Azure Drake and played the Squire as well. Um, but, you know... Wow. I guess there's like it's hard to it's hard very, to tell. very good memory. Yeah, very good memory. Like, yeah, there were yeah. there was like a hero power or two. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen a couple of matches after that. To, yeah. be, to be honest, but so. yeah, I mean, I think that shaman. You know, a lot of times you miss drops because right? you have a lot of really situational stuff like um, Leroy blah blah. So, I mean, I guess here he and Wind Fury. Yeah, so he had, he did have Wind Fury. I didn't see yeah. a Wind Fury. Oh, he, yeah, he I, did. I, I saw Wind Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Wind Fury, Bloodlust. Yeah. And I, I don't even know Leroy. if he ran Alec here. Yeah, and Leroy. I was like, if he ran Alec so here. Guy, yeah, it was so kind of like a Garus Shaman. Yeah, Garus oh, likes that kind of stuff, started. too. Okay. Okay, so RDU is playing oh, Giants. So yeah. this is something that we know now. He kept the faces as well. Oh, double Twilight. Well, if he can't d d uh, deal with the Twilight Drake. Then maybe he has an opportunity to, but I guess keeping the faces that is kind of double twilight thing. is kind of strong. Like in the giants deck, you you want to have uh, twilights and mountain giants. So if you get a double twilight, it's pretty cool. And One thing is, um, going first as giants, you don't need to drop a creature before turn four. If you go second, you can't tap tap. You know, you have to right. play um, something right, like Sun Fury or uh, uh, Ancient Arthur Watcher Forest or Farseer, here. exactly. So that's why maybe he just kept the five drop because he's. Uh, RD's probably just playing on tap tap no matter what on turn two and three and then um, you know play the play the Drake so he might feel a little bit better keeping some bigger creatures. On the other hand, there is no keeper of the grove, so there is no real way to get de to deal with the Twilight Drakes for yeah, now. Yeah, this is looking really good for RD. Normally, when you're playing this matchup, you're looking for really specific cards. You're looking for big game hunter, keeper, and maybe black Knight to some extent. Although that's not as important really. Um, yeah, because you're kind of like racing, but on the other hand, you, you can't race too much, you can't deal too much damage, because you have to play around the Molten Giants. Wow, what do you think of this play? He he had the mana curve going um, Sengen into yeah, the bear, well, four and but he just coined out the bear. And now he will play Sengen. Oh! oh. That wasn't a bad thing, I guess. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> no, but, but I mean, I don't... Uh, he could have... No, it was better to play just Sengen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, he's just going I think for it's first. okay to do this. 4 1 is so hard to leverage much, you know. It's like if you. I mean, you could Shadow Flame it, but then who, who cares? You know, you're using a Shadow Flame for not much either. So I kind of like just going for the face here. It's cool. Um, there's a potential faceless on the. On the bear, but he goes for a Twilight Drake. Twilight Drake's stronger than faceless here. In oh, the Defender of Argus was kind of. Like if you buff it for one, you have a five, two, five, two. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh my I was kind goodness! Of, I, I was expecting wow. that. I didn't want to say that. Oh. Arnie, you can't believe it. Just he yeah. realized back to back top yeah. decks. That's really sick. Of the Grove. This is turn six, so you don't. This, oh my goodness! This Pied Drake doesn't even trade with a creature. It just gets hero powered after. Oh my sweet lord! Okay, that is devastating. Well. He still, has a wall. he still has a fall back yeah, on this watcher. So what's the game plan? Oh, oh Ragnaros. Ragnaros. Uh, interesting. That's, no, that, that's interesting. That's MYM tech, because I know Tice like playing that for Freeze Mage. It's his way to kind of answer the Freeze Mage and uh, play a good series overall. So it's Yeah, if you're scared so, of Freeze Mage, Ragnaros. So that's what we mentioned, right? Like, you don't expect Ragnaros mostly in the, in the Giants. It actually oh. makes a lot of sense to some degree. Is there because, a Black Knight coming or something like that? Yeah, okay. because <laughs> Ragnaros is... <laughs> I was expecting... <laughs> 
Because Ragnaros' biggest weakness is BGH, but as Giants, you're already getting your other stuff BGH, so, you know, Ragnaros, it's kind of almost sure. immune to BGH, because you're assuming that BGH just kills something else, Yeah, you your know? mountain giants. That's kind of cool. And Faceless is not that popular, so... He has combo, by the way, so if he just pushes oh. for damage, okay. and just maybe draws... Even it, it's an innervate. It's an innervate. This game's over. Is there... I mean, um... Shasul definitely needs to think about how much damage to push in before the combo because if he goes to him, like next turn, turn eight, gets already down to ten, then he can lose the Molten Giant. But the other, on oh, the other hand, he's seen oh, Sun oh, Sunwalker. Sunwalker. The defender of Vargas was discarded, so Shasul knows that one Twin Giver is out. That is true. So he's so, more confident about that. Hmm. I mean, there's some moves here. You probably want to at least take off the Divine Shield somehow. You can hear power off the divine shield. Um, I think you hear power ascension. Hear power ascension, just leave it up. That's pretty reasonable. You can also take it out with a swipe and hear power and suicide one of the keepers. I like Senjin because then you play around Shadow Flame, kind of. Kind of, but then he attacks into the Senjin well, and Shadow Flame. If you're killing it, oh, you're okay. playing around Shadow Flame too, to some degree. It's hard to say what's better here. I think, well, oh, so it right, looks like well, he's removing. Going for the more aggressive route. This definitely gets lethal. Oh, I like, I like not attacking here. Yeah, not attacking here. here like is not good. Attacking here. Like with, with double molten. Oh, uh, he gets a taunter. Oh, that's it. important. <laughs> yeah, that is super important. But he can't play everything this turn. No. I think RDU should know that there's no uh, Black Knight because Black Knight would have gone down last turn instead of this instead of this awkward swipe hero power and suicide the creature. So. I think RDU, um, I, I would tap, Yeah. basically. 12 and 14 is not that much different, I feel, especially if you're getting the taunters out. If you can't deal with the Molten, you also can back it up with Faceless as well. If he's, it kind of it kind of sucks for him, because he, I think he wants to play, like, taunt two creatures with the Sun Fury, so if he just plays Molten Sun Fury and kind of wastes his mana, it's kind of weird, but also it's kind of weird to siphon, because now you're siphoning back up to 15. It's good against the combo, but again, taunting it is good against the combo too. Um, and the more you heal, the more your giant's going to cost later. So. Also, if there is a combo, you drop down just to one life, so with Siphon Soul, you're still dead to swipe, right? Mm, wild Growth doesn't help. Shao So here off the top. Yeah, so now Shao So has to decide whether he's just comboing here, um, combo and looked, trade. Yeah, co combo and trade, you know, most of it and do maybe a little bit of damage. Another thing you can do is maybe Scenarius, but Scenarius seems kind of bad in this situation. I guess he can be sure that there is no second Molten Giant because only one Molten was played. And, uh, right, he would have so, taunted uh, both of them. Yeah, so if you clear... I don't like I don't like this move. I would rather play Scenarius. Even if you get um, Scenarius Shadow Flamed by the Molten, then there's no taunt. And you can try to combo. If you play like this, let's assume he doesn't like have like so faceless shadow flame then. Yeah, but this seems like a weaker move for no reason. Like, why are you saving Snarius here? For what reason? All right, well he picks up a mountain giant. I got okay, well there's faceless here. That's almost certainly going down. Faceless. Oh, hellfire. Do you still faceless? You probably. Yeah, still. I yeah. think so. You have double taunts. And deal push damage. for damage. And this it's, actually sets up a potential lethal next turn as it's well. It's getting dangerous, yeah. Yeah, he needs an answer. Senjin. And now they have five health, so it's not that easy to actually clear them. Right, it's just outside of the, the four damage from the Treants. It's going to have to the sacrifice. The interesting thing enough is uh, Snarius would have won the game, if you think about it, because Snarius would have been able to trade for one of them, and and that's actually lethal. You see, because um, the 4-1 four four and the hero power, and then you have... You have these three to do 12, so I think that was a big misplay. But then the... I mean, the play might have been different right. against Scenarius, but... Okay, well, regardless, now Shao Sol has used his combo and puts him down to seven. So I guess uh, Ragnaros. Yeah, I mean, it's hard yeah. to drop a giant over Ragnaros. There's a little bit of advantage to some degree dropping the giant instead because Ragnaros, you might lose the faceless manipulator. Yep. So I think uh, Artie is playing around faceless. Oh, Harrison Ooh, a Harrison Jones. Jones. Nah, that's interesting. I was also wondering if maybe if Shao ran double combo, but I don't think he okay, looks like that kind of deck Okay, this is a crucial turn here. 
because faceless. Well, I think um, you siphon, some siphon soul. soul the five eight, and then you survive. But you're kind of in a weird situation still because you can still die. Yeah, you can still die to a lot of different things. Eight damage. Well, eight dam damage. damage requires like swipe and drew the card charge. Oh! oh! No, you should draw oh, wild growth first. <laughs> Oh, he's not playing wild growthing at all. You, you will wild growth. Uh, okay. I guess it doesn't matter because right. almost no matter what you draw, like, you're not gonna draw something and say, oh, "I'm not gonna BGH now, probably." But you know, I would just play Harrison. Yeah, you could try to save Draxus, but <laughs> what do you think about that? What do you think about that? <laughs> that's pretty that's sick. Crazy to draw from <laughs> so many cards. Sense. You will draw into lethal oh, for Leroy. sure. Oh, that's a big draw. But in this situation, this turn it doesn't matter. I don't think it does. You can silence. Well, you, it's not right enough. now. He's fighting to survive. Actually, yeah. yeah. Has to spend every all, all of his removal on his creatures. Can he remove everything? He has remove to remove everything. How? Wait, he has to siphon soul. What? Siphon the soul. Five, Harrison four? is the biggest, and I then guess. he can't do anything else unless you play. And then he drops down to five, which is almost like lethal because shape shift, and it's four and four. Like there's a lot of spells that deal four damage from the druid side. And it is anything, the druid of the claw, the the swipe. Yeah. Or even force like of, a force of nature. Force of nature, savage roar. Savage roar. Or do you might have made a mistake this game by um kind of playing too greedy by playing the giants the rag. Even though he's playing around faceless, you know, we're not too sure whether whether Shastel even has faceless. <laughs> well he also tapped as well. He's gonna silence the Taunter now because he has Leroy. So he has lethal if he draws Power Overwhelming or Soulfire. Um, we're not sure if he has Power Overwhelming in the deck. Oh, oh, he gets a Savage lethal. Roar. <laughs> and now oh, Shao Soul is able to close out the first game. And you know, Handlock against Druid. If the, the Druid is able, not able to deal with the threats, Handlock can usually just steamroll, but Shao Soul got the exact yeah. answers he needed back to back. I feel he like the two, the two um, keepers, and he didn't. Shastel didn't have BGH, but then there were no giants. Right. <laughs> so yeah, but and then when the giants came out, then the BGH, BGH showed up. But I mean, you know, I, I don't feel like Shastel got that lucky either. It's not like his curve was too. I mean, it was nothing like a Maz's curve. And you know, <laughs> how do you feel about the matchup overall? Like, it it feels like Druid starts to win versus Handlock. I think so. Like, back in the like. Two three months ago, everyone everyone was assuming the handlock was a counter to Druid, but yeah. now it seems Druid is mostly winning this matchup. And I think a lot of it has to do with handlocks. Um, they're playing weaker versions of the handlock because they want to play against Miracle Rogue, so they're running more like Leroy stuff instead of creatures now. So I think that's one of the reasons. Another reason is I think Druids are getting better and better at really saving the situational things like Black Knight, a Keeper. You know, I agree. Getting smarter. Game Hunter, and yeah, we are. We, smarter. And now we are going to see the mirror. The mirror, okay. No, Artie is on the... He has the wild growth. So Artie is playing token. I saw Artie's token druid. It's very similar to what, the one oh, we Shasso, ran, but yeah. Artie does have a blood knight in his token druid. I think he has a blood knight. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw blood knight. That's Turn two wild growth for Shao and didn't have to use coin. Oh, this is interesting, actually, because I'm, un I I'm under the impression that token druid does battle with oh, spread, right? Like, either ramp and pot or ramp Well, you can play, like, a hybrid with uh, a token druid with wild growth, and a lot but of people still does not have wild growth, so... Actually, this is a poor matchup, so are you picked this matchup into Shao Maybe Maybe he felt like druid versus druid is a coin flip. Well, he also has Warrior as his last class, and you might feel like he has the best chance. I felt wild growth is too brutal in Druid Mirror if one person has wild growth and the other person has it. And since you're a token Druid, you'll, you'll never have it. So. Oh, on the other hand, like, are you had a lot of success with Druid before, like, uh, with 4 and 0 versus Aquanix, was it? Or 3 0? Oh. Okay, well. I wonder if he's uh, there's to merit to holding combo, it. Because if he drops the Squire, um, Divine Shield might not stick, right? Yeah. But even so, then that would maybe he'll that coin that the vocal. commander. Oh uh, my God, commander? he's going to coin the commander. Look at this! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! Oh, this that's... will be huge. Wait, why wow. would you coin the commander? You would think that as this kind of druid, like a ramp druid, you 
like the token druid is more aggressive than you. Like they're all in against you. So you're trying to respond to them more than. Yeah, cause I I would drop the taunter this turn, especially oh. since. Oh, black oh black. man, he doesn't want to play within the BGH range as or well. The silence. Well play. <laughs> That's actually um, that th that's a shock. It's actually pretty smart not to play a squire. Yeah. I think he might actually end up just playing a squire after and saving the divine shield. It still makes sense. You play around BGH and you play around keeper to some degree as well. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Maybe he, he can just save. If the you bomb. have power of the wild, I feel like you have to save it too because the violet teacher next. I don't turn think you should power the wild. He, you have a violet teacher yeah. in your hand, so that'd be fairly wasteful. Of yeah, just a waste of the card. Exactly. But he has the keeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was listening to the Chinese version of that. So he does have the response to it. Oh, oh he's going, he's going for, for face. The, yeah, he's this going for the damage play. A really aggressive move. Wow. Well, they are. This is really unfortunate because this is token druid. He's yeah. totally not respecting the token. Oh my goodness! And the the power of the wow is gonna wreck his face. This was super strong here. Yeah. And he has one part of the combo. Yeah, he does. And the way Shao was being aggressive sold as if he had the combo and he was pushing for damage, but the reality is he has cards that are almost just as slow. Yeah, in this matchup, it really seems like the, the bigger Druid should play more of a passive role instead of charging the Argent Commander to the face of the coin instead of playing your stronger creature and not getting in the forward But is he playing a really, like, uh, slower Druid? Well, he has wall growth, so his mana curve is definitely bigger. And he has Yetis, right? Yeah. Yeti. Oh, man, he got an Ancient of Lore as well. It's a nice draw. Do you even want to use Ancient of Lore here? Uh, I'd say Squire plus Swipe sounds good. Yeah, I like it. That's, that's that hero power is so fine. Oh, I can't save this thing. creature, actually. Yeah, I guess. But I guess Ardu doesn't want to take too much damage, scared of the... I guess, yeah, staying out of range as much as possible of combo range. But Drew's the class that doesn't really have board clear, so... Um, I don't think that creature was even in swipe range, the one with suicide. It was a uh, four two. Four right? two. So you know you're not gonna get brawled. You're not gonna get flame strike blizzard. Um, I think you should just have as big of a board as possible because you you'll never be blown out except by swipe. But yeah, he'll need a spell power in order to completely clear that. Ah, oh, so now we're coming down to what Shasso can do. He needs to kind of control back this board. He's gonna it's, be forced to kind of try to tough. semi clear it. It's super tough because he, he has a clear divided teacher. And he will have the clear board after that anyway, so. There are still creatures on the RDU side, and he's slowly getting the damage in and. Oh wow, getting that's a, a pretty interesting wrath. Yeah, he didn't cycle instead. Well, uh, now is a really good time for Ancient of Lore. <laughs> Get that part of a combo. Oh, they're really oh. nice. Innervate Power of the Wild. That actually makes sense. That's pretty yeah. good. It definitely makes sense. I actually think that Ardu probably made a mistake. Um, because he actually had to draw on the Innervate. I think it probably would have been better Azure Drake and also cast the Power of the Wild. It's more consistent. Didn't he draw the Power of the Wild off? No, I think he had the Power of the Wild. I'm not sure. I guess if he didn't have it. I think he drew the Innervate there. Oh, Ragnaros. Mm. Again. Ragnaros in every deck. Is this the thing? Okay. Force of Nature also clear. Yeah, but it also produces a weak board in response. Well, I think you can easily like clear the taunts, um, attack face, and play Rag, I guess. Uh, if he trades. He can clear the taunts and have a 50 50 on Rag. Can you get lethal? No. No, I don't think so. It will be Not with 21. Rag. Yeah. But if it misses, it puts him at 3 health. Assuming he clears, right? I think Artie is thinking, if he misses the rag, does he die to the combo? That's basically what he's thinking. Like, there's no way, because no, he still has a... a to -to, yeah. The only way is if he had double... He had Innervate, double Savage Orb, and a Force of Nature. <laughs> and he, oh, he hits the Cenarius. It's pretty nice. He clears the board again. Force of Nature comes out. Well, he's uh, three nothing. cards short of that winning There's combo. no way to actually there's clear no, Ragnaros here. here. Just play a Taunt and I guess... Yeti. The Yeti. You just lose here from here. All right, well, Shao Soul doesn't have anything to respond to it. And with that Force of Nature, I believe that's it. That should be Yeah, lethal. Force of Nature. Yeah. Yeah. Force of Nature, take out the Yeti, 
Ragnaros, the face. Hero power. Hero power. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's it. So, RDU is able to tie up the series. And, you know, Shots won't even give him the satisfaction. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's interesting that you pointed out that the slower Druid, you know, they have the advantage, but if they kind of play into what the slower Druid's advantages are, he was kind of setting the, trying to set the tempo of the match by coining out the Argent Commander yeah. and trying to set the Yeah, that wasn't necessary. I mean, if you think about dominance. it, the Argent Commander is a weaker creature than a bear. Like, yeah. the, the, the reason why it costs more mana and, and it, you know, it's a strong creature is because of the charge ability. But at that point, you don't really need to be pushing in damage. Your opponent is at 30, and he's arguably playing more aggressive deck than Also, his curve got kind of funny after the play, Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. That was big. Yeah. The other big mistake was when he decided to leave up um, against the token deck. So we will see a warrior with Cleave. I haven't seen that card okay. for a long time. Yeah, Cleave it's... is good against token, really. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Generally against the aggressive swarm kind of decks, you're able yeah. to use Cleave pretty Especially effectively. Especially since Artie is very likely to and play... And Whirlwind. Artie is very likely to play when his power wilds on two because he has two, and then uh, Cleave does a lot, actually. Oh, imagine if you play the... Ah. Imagine you play this, and then Artie plays one of the power of the wilds, then gets blown up by Cleave. <laughs> I think it's a play, actually. Do well, he has to draw through the Wrath so he can deal with the sick read. The Wrath draw saves him. He probably would have actually played the, uh, the power if he didn't draw the Wrath. Mm. Oh. Oh, well, now Shao Sol is interesting. He has oh, the yeah, Arcanite so Reaper. Reaper. More of that mid-range centric. Ragnaros. Ragnaros is the MVP card <laughs> of, the top, of this, uh, this debate. This tournament, definitely. Do you, All right. Oh, this is interesting. Do you power in power? I just uh I think you say you don't because if you coin out you you can't play bear next turn. So you're messing up your mana. Well, you can play keeper and just but you keeper know. Yeah, you <laughs> keeper is a more of a situational <laughs> keeper keep. on the face. Keeper in the face. Yeah. Don't give him any armor. No shield <laughs> slam for you. It's not something you want to put Dude, yourself. Dude, going for the face is good. <laughs> it's okay, okay, but it's Net. not like you want to keep her. It's face. always to the face with nibs, that's just yeah. a general rule. <laughs> What this is good too is it also shreds his armor, so that way if he armors up, he has to have the shield block, shield this slam. This is big because he has shield. But shield he also has the Arcanite Reaper in response. So Arcanite Reaper can take it out. Two shield slams. That's unfortunate. He's he lost all his armor. And will continue to do so. Well, maybe start start. Well, it's the next not turn. that the, the Druid has a lot of charge creatures anyway, right? So from yeah. next turn he should be able to, to stack up some armor. Stack, already. start stacking some armor. This, this kind of sucks for him. He's going to have to keep her the face, maybe, depending on what he draws. Oh, Blood, now blood we Mage want, is better. Now blood we want to keep her the face. No, no Blood Mage. Well, because then blood it mage forces him okay. to potentially remove yeah. uh, the Blood Mage. Exactly. And it's like a 1-5. Well, those Keepers deal potentially 4 damage to the face. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. No, but if there's a damage per card, it's better. RDU has... Oh, Ysira. This is this looking is like cool. Tides of Times Warrior. When you play Arcanite Reaper, you have late game threats like Ysira to kind of make up for the fact so that Shasel you don't have So has a, has a handful of biggies. <laughs> That's what we call it. Oh, I was, I was wondering if he was going to kill us. <laughs> I guess it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But one of the reasons why you want to drop Blood Mage is because RDU's hand is so bad here. It's like all situational, and he's the one that has to drop proactive creatures in this matchup. If you just have the whole situational hand, we're just going to armor, armor, armor. Yeah, armor, yeah on the other hand, he wanted to play something that will be killed by Archer and Reaper, right? Like, he he, will, he wasn't able to use Power of the Wild, so... Yeah, these are the most awkward turns for Warrior 2, like the 5-6, yeah. where they're trying to really power up through these important turns of like 8-10 to 10 where they had their big legendaries. Once Shao still gets to 8, he's going to be strong. That's next turn. Yep, next turn. So, RDU has kind of been sitting on a window that he hasn't been able to capitalize. That's oh. a card that he would have wanted. Pretty nice, right? That's a huge draw. And you still power after that? Do you power here? I think you do. Um, this power. is big because Grom kills your Drake, but now it doesn't. I think he actually thought about that a little bit. Well, I guess you still play Ragnaros. Here. You like using Grom to kill off the Drake here? This is a matchup where you're definitely the control uh, player as the warrior, so you can kind of play uh, Grom not for face damage. But I've for seen it many times. Okay. Hey, Thalnos and Drake. It's the Thalnos, maybe, or the Drake? Oh, oh the face! That is the worst. Oh. <laughs> now he can just use uh, wow. one of the Force of Nature to clear Ragnaros. One Force of Nature plus one of the two twos. Yeah, like Thalos. Oh, that's obviously. interesting. Do yeah. you just go for the face here? Wait, can you? Huh. Seven? I don't know. It's actually something to consider because Brawl, if, if you get Brawl, if you go for the face, they play your creatures, go for a face, Brawl might kill the rag as well, so. 
I think it's... I guess you just clear. It's safe. Like, there is no reason I, to leave Ragnarok. Yeah, I think, especially because if you kind of recognize the Arcanite Reaper, and you and you and and if you have experience against, like, maybe Tide's deck, he also plays double faces with, like, Leroy's and stuff, and it can get disastrous if you leave up Rag. But I think there is merit to that, especially with how much he has in his hand. Still, 16 is pretty low. He could have gotten the order to 8 and had, like, four creatures out, maybe? S or I guess no. He can't uh, do the violet yeah, teacher and the. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess you acolyte whirlwind and execute here. Oh wait, can you just Isera? Uh, this Oof. is kind of weird because I can't. Really that's tell, risky. That's like, really super tell, risky. Because it's Chinese, I have a hard time telling what these cards actually are. Well, he should definitely oh, remove it if he can. Oh. The, remove the Drake. Yeah, he has the execute. He has the whirlwind execute. Yeah, he has yeah. the whirlwind execute. Well, hmm. Whirlwind and attack into Drake. That seems. Wait, can he just roll and execute with the Acolyte? Yeah. Yeah, he can. Wait, like, why does he play the Acolyte first? Acolyte, Whirlwind, Execute. Does he have an Execute? Uh, he has an Execute, well, yes. because he wants to use the Groma, or the, yeah, the Groma can talk garage. But then this... Dude, did you actually know How is, What is his Gromash, posture for next turn? Did you know that Gromash is actually Garrosh's father? Oh, I thought he was just a relative. He's just a father. Well, I thought he was just a fan. He's probably a fan. <laughs> Being a father, He's, he likes well, dreadlocks. What's interesting is a lot of us know Gromash as Grom. Yeah. But I, I, I actually um, only recently found out that Gromash was Grom because I played WoW a lot and I didn't like I always wonder like, who is this Gromish? Like there's, there's <laughs> never a Gromish, Gromish guy. before in, uh, in the Warcraft lore, and then I realized that's actually Grom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to say like the first time I, I heard the Gromash name, it was Carson. Mm. Uh, Shalso ends up putting that acolyte, but. So he is in four seven yeah. range. What? He didn't attack? He, he tried to well, attack. Well, he's holding it, but... There's no point attacking. Really yeah, I know. It was so... It, it looks so weird. does... Oh. Mm. No Savage Roar. Well, Do you silence Actually, the wait. You definitely he, silence he the... Still, he still can draw into the combo. But I, I, I don't think... I don't you think you want to wrath for one. No. <laughs> to draw no, I was just thinking if you really felt like playing Not high stakes. Do you want to just wrath for do one? Do you wrath and shapeshift? I think you wrath for one. You do shapeshift because innervate gets you another creature, yep. but also you don't you don't care about the innervate. You don't need the innervate. You have ten mana. You have no cards. You, yeah. What you need is another card. Ah, uh, you can actually like definitely the innervate innervate order. power. Hero power. Oh, well, the loot hoarder gets you closer to the combo. That, that yeah, makes the, sense. That makes the one sense. one doesn't do anything. The one one doesn't do much, and you want to cycle a loot hoarder. Oh, there is a bro. Oh. <laughs> does he win the brawl? And he has an armor up as well, so that helps put him outside the range of uh, the the combo. Okay, so he he's gonna um, draw to see first before attack he for one and then brawl. That's smart. Yeah, should, and then he, he can shield slam whatever's left as well. I think he should definitely um, draw first. Why? Yeah. Why do this first? Well, because I think you're gonna shield block shield slam anyways, so it won't change pretty much, pretty much the play. So it's kind of you, you basically want to draw the card. And what wins the brawl? Oh, one one. Okay, I guess everything was a 1-1. One, one yeah. <laughs> so, only the Violet Teacher was the only okay. thing not negligible. Wait, suddenly it doesn't look that good for RDU. Wait. Well, yeah, what? RDU kind of propped himself so that we can put in combo, but that shield block is massive and an oh, Armor Smith. Smith. You know, he's played Armor well. Smith at this point, I think. Yeah, he's out of the combo range. He looks good. Now he has, what, he can deal four damage next turn and still play Ysera? Woo! Oh. That is not very good either. Two of Ysera the worst. is going to lock down the game once it gets played, maybe, unless it gets combo. Unless he gets a combo. Yeah, he has to draw a he big. He has to draw combo extremely quickly. I think Shasol might have an Argus in this deck, too, so if he Argus and Ysera... Wait, he has Argus? I think so. Ysera usually sure. is comboed with I thought that was Masan, Masan, had, Masan Argus. had Argus. Okay, Masan had Argus. Alex or an Alex Straza. Ysera is better. Yeah, then you, you Alex next turn. I think. You Wait, Alex if, you play, and if you play Ysera... Oh yeah, and if you have, uh, yeah, 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 yeah I would, I would play Alex and heal myself. Let's see, then he would be up to twenty. Hmm. Twenty-one. I think 20. that was a mistake. What he did. Well, he's wait, he wait, 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 wait. He should have shield slammed and used. Yeah. Uh, okay, we well, just save your shield slams at this point. Then that makes sense. Just well, he's him. still within well, combo he's range. Still within combo range. What is that? So it's a nightmare. He is in combo range. Nightmare gives the yes, plus five, plus five. He needs the combo. No. Wait, in a weird way, if he has Nightmare and Alex Straza, that's Nightmare. What is Nightmare? nightmare does plus five, plus five, <laughs> plus five, plus five until the it's end, not, until the start enough. of the next turn. Okay. So oh, he has five plus the five. Does oh, but he used. Okay, never mind. No, no he doesn't. Not, it's he doesn't. Alex Straza. I was wondering if he had weapon again to maybe add something, but 
Execute. Oh, this is nice. You can actually clear easily. Okay, is that plus five, plus five? It so is. He can do 10 damage. Follow up. Yeah, after Alex, and 17 for the two armor. So I'd say you go for clear and maybe even Alex yourself. I mean, you, you don't need to Alex the dirt here because you're your serious thinking. So your serious will take over the game and instantly, you know? So all you need to do is survive, I think. So Alex, your own face might be better. I think he's just armoring up and doing everything better. Okay. All right, well, there he goes, managing it and saving his Alex. What does Ysera draw next? Oh, Ysera, Ysera awakens. awakens. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Yes. But that's you can never more. Ysera that's awakens. 15. You can't Ysera awakens and Alex on the same turn. Ooh, oh, okay, Ragnaros. so Ragnaros. This is a true yellow rag, because I think Artie is in fairly yellow mode right now. Yeah. <laughs> and he's really hoping to hit the face. Uh, I think if he hits better. the face, it will be face. so good. Oh, who are you? Look at oh. those emotions. Oh. <laughs> he ate a couple lemons after that play. <laughs> oh, wait. Let's see. Is it enough? This is lethal? No, 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 no. He needs enough. to use Alex he first. He needs Alex for damage. But what's interesting is he can. Is there a shield <sighs> slam? Or can, he, can he, like, shield slam efficiently while playing Alex? Don't think so. I don't think you need to play Alex and Shield Slam. Say you armor up, Shield Slam, play your Charger, and it's still good, right? Yeah, and play patiently. Plus, yeah, exactly. then you have the damage to guarantee kill him. He's saving a Shield Slam. He's saving a Shield Slam? For a rainy day. I don't like that, because uh, that's another creature yeah. that sticks. You don't need to Because also, if he couldn't deal with the creatures immediately, like and he didn't have Force of Nature, say he only had Savage Roar, then you actually have the lethal right there because Alex puts him down to yeah. 17. You have the 8 damage plus the nightmare. And a 4 3 else. is a permanent creature on the board. You got oh, the combo. Oh man! A little late. <laughs> RDU can't believe it. And you know, I, you were saying maybe he was going to stay calm, but when you're under this kind of situation. Oh, this is you feel weird because he, he doesn't really want to give Ysira another draw. So if you play Ancient Lore, you might give another draw. Actually, I think Ancient Lore is still better because you can f Savage Roar it. I'd rather yeah. Savage Roar it than Force Like, nature. there is no... Oh, man, this is so weird. Or do you just save the combo at this point? He needs to draw something. Swipe. Okay. Swipe is fine. The swipe. That can bring back RDU if his opponent is unable to deal with it. But I think he has enough to Shield Slam it now. The Shield Slam Conservative. Has Shield now been paying Alex. Alex. Yeah, heal some Alex to delicious. Who do you Alex here? Do seven or heal four? Do you, you Alex him okay. and go for lethal next turn? Because he potentially has what fourteen? Okay, so can RDU get? The... He's like a BGH. Oh my, oh my god! god. <laughs> <That's the best>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, ridiculous! That's not over yet because Drunk, just Drake first because. Right. The Shansaw has 14 damage in his hand. Oh, right from the nightmares and the yes. Sarah awakens, and it's gonna clear the board too. But well, it also well, damages himself. If he gets some so points of damage, he, he, he needs two damage. A cruel taskmaster. Cruel taskmaster wins this. The cruel taskmaster wins the game. Oh, nope. I guess this is over. Yeah. He, well, he wait. He armor up. He's out of the lethal he's range. He's out of lethal so. range still. This is crazy. No, 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 but he... Oh, you're right. He's going to be at 15. 15. He's going to be at 15, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there still an innervate? innervate. He, he needs to go draw an innervate right now. He, I think he used both. He used... Oh, he only has two cards left. Oh. What's the last two cards? A blood knife. If, if, um, if Artie only has two cards left, it might not be possible for him to win. No, no, he's dead. He might have to clear. He has to clear. He has to clear here. But okay. then how's he gonna win? He has two cards left. Well, he has <laughs> minions to okay, wear so him down. Okay, so he does have some minions. So you force some nature. Yeah. Here. And, and then the Savage Roar can maybe make up for it, but... This wow. game is crazy. It is. And it's coming down to the wire. The core card elite might have to be used as removal. And Bardi is on his last card, by the way, after he's this. He still needs two, two points of damage. damage. Two more damage. Two more damage. Oh, he, gets it. Oh. he gets it! Oh! Oh, and that's exact lethal! That is lethal. That's, I think one overkill, is it? No, it's exactly, no, it's it's exactly, exactly what lethal. he needed. Yeah. Just what the doctor ordered. Uh, I that was a that I think that was a huge mistake. Already you, it's like, oh my god. 
It's over for game number three, and now we go to game number four, where RDU is on the verge of elimination. RDU still almost alive. made a comeback from that. Like, almost that made a comeback. That was so sick. To make a comeback from. Yeah. Oh man. It's gonna come down to a warrior mirror match, and then it's gonna come down to the handlock versus the the warrior if RDU can survive. And the handlock has an advantage. Right, so unless they can get warrior the execute. Versus warrior mirror match. Shield slams. Yeah. This Warrior vs. War match is actually okay, so very interesting. Warrior vs. War, and if RDU wins, he plays against Handlock. Yep. Handlock vs. War is okay, I believe. For... Yeah, Handlock has an advantage. Wait Handlock a second. Is, generally has an advantage, A but... Dark Iron Dwarf? Oh, wait. Dark Iron Dwarf. Is this dwarf? a mid-range? Is... Oh, wait, this is actually, like, RDU mentioned that this is his Warrior that was played before. That okay, we've seen. so this is RDU War. We haven't seen this. I don't even know huh. what's in this deck. Yeah, you can't. It's it's a core con, and it's RG RG commander. Okay, so this is mid range. Yeah, mid range warrior. It's starting to see a little bit of popularity on ladder. You know, but when this I was hand talking is to, sick. Look at the hand. When I was talking to RDU, he said that he was talking a lot about freeze mage. It seems like RDU respects freeze mage a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately, no one's playing freeze mage against him. But I think this warrior here is the counter freeze mage. Unfortunately, I don't think it's that great in this matchup. We'll have Ar armor smith battles. <laughs> look at that. He plays armor smith. Oh, oh. cool. Uh. I think I can still. <laughs> play Armorsmith and attack with an Armorsmith. <laughs> okay, so you get two armor and he only gets one fight, like, value. <laughs> oh. What? You don't attack into Armorsmith? You, you get two. two. <laughs> so much value there. <laughs> so much value. <laughs> BGH, that's a good draw eventually, but... <laughs> attack into Armorsmith? No? Yes? No, but it's not no, worth no, it for no, no. He's gonna, he's for RDU. I battle. guess now you cruel well, Plus, RDU, RDU is the ag aggressive player in this matchup. Yeah. Um, Chastel doesn't know this yet, but... You know, soon you might know. I will. Okay, that's fine. I no, guess. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is so Armor, cool. Armor, please. Armor. It means I fight, right? This, I guess directly. If you're, if you're the aggressive warrior in this matchup, you, ha you have to be feeling really bad about the other player just having two armor smiths and they're stacking up. Sure, but he has Quare Cross to clean this up. Okay. Well. And his opponent can respond. Six armor with, uh, now. With the cool task. Cruel Taskmaster? Ah, even Ooh, better. Even a weapon. Warax, that's better, isn't it? I think it's better. Because Cruel Taskmaster, you have to suicide your own. You still cruel, you still I, I cruel. still cruel. And... Oh. oh. Okay. I mm. guess he's saving it for uh, Acolyte of Pain. Sure, makes turn sense. five. Yeah, that makes I think it's because Shastel still thinks that this is a control mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's played. he's trying to play it as much, as much card efficiently as possible still. Well, it still looks like a... It a still looks right? like it, exactly. There's it's He hasn't cool. already hasn't shown Dark Iron or Commander yet. But next turn... You will be in a world of pain. Yeah. Or surprise. Okay, so this is gonna obviously be the draw. Yeah, I, I think it's the best play. Yeah, yeah. You develop your board. You have a three-two and a two-two, and, and you, you draw, draw a card. card. And you still get to remove the four-two. So it's good. It's good. And that's gonna still make the the Argent Commander turn pretty awkward as well. Oh, and then he got a weapon. <laughs> I guess you Argent Commander three-two at this point. You you really don't want to leave up Acolyte against Warrior Control. Mm -hmm. You can't roll one either. Oh, no, yeah, and then so he's immediately going to be traded into okay, it, but so uh, he's just going to go for it. He's going for it. So now Shastel knows what's up yeah. to some degree. Now he has to know what kind mm. of deck that, that is. Oh, Faceless is kind of cool. Okay, so right? he faces the commander, then what do you, I then guess what do, you do after? Attack commander with a 2-2. And then the commander and save. Maybe even save what the is commander. he trying to shield block mm, into? Shield block doesn't really. I, don't, I think you play your faceless liberally now because you know that the other player's a smaller deck, maybe. Yeah, and you're not trying to win the control war necessarily. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to survive. I think I will actually play a weapon. A weapon. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a good draw. That's oh nice. my goodness. I mean, that kind of feels like a waste. But again, if you're. Oh. He really wants those cards, I guess. That's pretty ridiculous. It's not huge, just right. All right. Well, okay. he's gonna save it, but I don't. I don't like it as well. I like, like I would, I would definitely yeah. get rid of their armor and like start pushing with damage a bit. But he's getting a really controlish approach here. Mm. Yeah, he's being. And he's been really conserved with shield slams all series long. He, he really likes holding on to them. So it does have a whirlwind to take out the divine shield. Um, you can also just face this and slam it. Does he have a slam? No, or a uh, shield slam. Shield slam, yeah. Oh, okay. Faceless shield slam removed. That's pretty good. 
You can't value your shield slam that highly anymore because you're losing your armor. Yeah, and you know that this is more on the higher end curve of stuff, so... Okay, so the difference here... Oh, I think he messed up. I thought he could have done... Yeah, he thought he probably could have played Korkron plus exactly. the shield block. Wow. And now he's going for face. But then you... Oh, this is so So weird. he wants to shift back into the aggressor position. Oh, I think it's okay. you just trade at this point, but I don't oh, because know. he clicked the hero bar like by yeah yeah exactly by reflex. okay okay so there is harvest golem that makes sense because dark iron dwarf you need you kind of need targets you know, yeah harvest golem is the stickiest creature well, you're still going to play harvest uh, you're still going to play dwarf. dark iron I feel yeah. I mean you're obviously not scared of all of these two creatures and you still get more damage in anyways mm -hmm. right since if you play dark iron you get two damage in if it survives you get four anyways so I don't know I don't oh, he really decided like to just hero bar okay. So maybe RD is taking kind of a controlish approach Sick as well. Sick read, he's seen that cleave. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that why? Did he get cleave last game? He did. Yeah, he did. Oh, so that, he knows that, that the cleave is there. Oh, but that's kind of awkward to cleave those two. Yeah, yes. I mean, exactly. I think it also because maybe he hesitated for a long time after armoring up, so he could be reading that he has armor, uh, shield okay. camp. So, the face. I mean, I guess he can't hit the golem. <laughs> Yeah, sh reduce his armor, I guess, as it's well. It's not, not bad, because yeah, there's... Oh, shield block. Yeah. Shield block is good. Get. You have two shield slams in your hand. Play the dark iron. Probably the fire war axe? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, yeah fire shield you, can armor armor. you can armor up, actually. Because of the yeah. five attack weapon, yeah, true. you want, you want more armor for a shield slam. These shield slams are going to be brutal. Maybe. Because... Oh! Oh, Harrison <laughs> Jones. Harrison Jones. And that could be MVP. And, and RDU did Alex see that previous game. Alex to the game. face. 15 damage. Four. And you peel the armor off for shield slam. This is a ridiculous tempo move. And he still has the faceless. If something with charge comes up. Okay, so there's BJ. Oh, okay. okay. Oh! So he has... It's gonna get... He's going to get... Uh, Harrison Jones. Yes. No. <laughs> oh wow, that's true. <laughs> only for only for one, only for one. And bro. Oh, Harrison Jones and bro. Well, bro do first, bro first. Then Harrison, uh, bro first, then Harrison Jones, I guess. <laughs> Would just break his spirits back to back. Dude, can you Harrison Jones first? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can. <laughs> you can. I, oh, he's going for it. <laughs> wow. he might, he's not brawling in the no, he will be yeah. just. I guess. Is he, no, shield shield slam. slam cleave. <laughs> yeah, Jeez, shield slam, bro. cleave. Double shield slam and cleave. Oh, he's going to try to urge it. Oh! oh that okay, was well. Too greedy, uh, I guess. Oh! No, oh, he could. Uh, he only could have removed okay. one now. Yeah, I guess there's not a better way, a better order to do it in. I suppose not. If you only if you had to use the armor up and you yeah, didn't have armor leave. exactly. Shao still still has twenty life. Ardu does not have enough damage yet, and also Shao still is starting to threaten his own lethal as well with Grom. Yeah, the shield slam will, will be. Yeah, he has to use the shield slam because later they will, they will be just use this. Ardu mm -hmm. still has another shield slam, and he'll have seven armor probably next turn. But he's getting lower. I yeah. mean, now Ardu can deal. Can you cruel here? Because then you get wiped by whirlwind in Six. a way. I, I I think he wants to also calculate his odds of maybe mm -hmm. drawing into. I mean, if he's holding this, that means he might also have Gromash in his deck. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Eleven is super low. Eh? Yeah, eleven is super low. Now like Geddon is not a play. Baron Geddon? Baron Geddon lowers your own health. Yeah. But it does... No, it, it does leaves damage the golem too. Do you just Gromash into a 4-2? I guess he does. And force him to remove it. Second Shield Slam is also here. Yeah. So RDU. Shield Slam is killing you. RDU, let's see if RDU has faces. I don't think so. Oh, nice draw. That is really nice. Well, can exactly you pick up to follow need. it up? Oh. Gromash! Oh, this oh, is Nico next turn. This could be next the next turn. turn. I think this is the next turn. Like this is no the way. next turn. Yeah. You don't attack with your weapon. Yeah, here. you just hold it. You just hold. You can no do it next point. turn. Unless you're scared of another Harrison Jones. <laughs> 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 or an ooze to back ooze. In the Or like what the the blood sail corsair oh, armor. That the, what, that won't matter. It's too much. I think. He has a shield slam though. So the armor up shield slam, and then that puts him at 18, and then the 12. Plus the five, so it's at seventeen. So he doesn't die. Does he? Grom does twelve plus thirteen, fourteen. That is seventeen still. Yeah. Oh wait. No, it's eighteen. No, seventeen. He had eighteen. Uh, eighteen. So he's, he's gonna be one short. Oh wow. That's quite unfortunate. Eighteen. 
Should he still Grimeer? I guess you know. I think at this point, that's his second shield block, I believe. And um, Artie knows there's no Alex. Yeah. But no Artie is scared no of Grom. Faceless. I don't think he can Grom because of Faceless. Right. In deck. Artie goes back to 29 health. 28 now. <laughs> that's gross. He went back to full health. Uh, back to an even 30. Why not? Even 30. Let's settle it right there. That looks good, right? Now he's going to be representing 18 next turn. Actually, you think about this kind of mid range warrior. If you curve out as big as Grom as well, I think this. Oh, that's it. That's it. RDU ties it. We'll finish your thought here. But I actually think that this mid range warrior is actually good against the control warrior. But I think it's going to be weak to handlock. Yeah. Because if you're trying to pressure and damage early, that's exactly what handlock is good at, right? Well, Taking it really damage depends what he, Maybe. what he gets. Because when you're playing versus handlock, you have to get those executes and shield slam and shield blocks to be able to deal with the. That's the true. Stuff. I think it really depends on opening hands a yeah. lot. And also. Uh, but I do like to follow up on your point. I think the faster war uh, Warrior do wins, Kick made a mention, that's why partially why when Corcoran first started getting cycled in, he would win the mirror all the mm -hmm. time because you'd kill their frothings really easily and you'd be able to get momentum. And I think RD was able to play really well in calm. And you know, that was a position where we thought that maybe Shao Soul was going to win that series right there and then, but RD was able to pull back in. And we're going to see whether or not the handlock can hold. And the end of handlock is really bad. I'd say. Hmm? You want to? I, I would mulligan everything. I you guess. mulligan everything. I don't think you can keep Hellfire. This is not aggressive enough where you're going to Hellfire him for. No way. There's not many targets that also died like, to three health other than like the cruel task. And keeping yeah. Hellfire here would be a gigantic mistake. Or you do have the core crown. You want to have the giant and Twilight. You want to have the giant Twilight. Like, and also, you you don't even want to draw Hellfire. It's almost a dead card in this matchup. You didn't get. He didn't get the coin. Like, Do you like having the coin? I don't like having the coin as giants. You have your turn four quicker. Giants is, is one of those decks that's extreme. That's why Giants vs. Miracle is so weird, because Giants really doesn't want the coin, and Miracle really does want the coin. So that matchup is actually kind of indifferent. But Okay, still no, no Twilight and no, no Giant. Yeah. And RDU's hand is also not that exciting. Yeah, I guess. he needs kind of like a direct. Well, I mean, this is kind of like a normal hand. I don't know. I don't know what your what kind of hands you can expect in this. Still no giant. See what he taps for. I guess you still mm -hmm. tap. I mean, if you play the Watcher, you can threaten an owl, but you don't have the owl, so... Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a straight up bluff. Exactly. <laughs> and still no giant. Siphon still no soul. giant. So there's two siphons? Yeah, looks do you, like. Do, do you dwarf With here? Alex? I guess... Hmm. I okay. guess uh, RD is trying to play it slow. You don't really want to rush giant straight into Molten Range, so... You're, this war is not fast enough to rush them straight into Molten Range, yeah. right? So Plus, armoring up is also beneficial if you draw into Shield Slam, slam exactly. and Shield Block. Shastle has a really bad hand. Farseer? Okay, tax. He's going to play. Oh, okay. Ah, the Drake. One card off. Okay, so next turn, Drake. That's actually scary. It threatens Shadow Flame, threatens Owl. Mm -hmm. oh, well, there is a Shield Block. Okay, Arcanite Reaper, perhaps? I mean, this kind of worked out for Shao Soul. Like he 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 doesn't have any real way to activate. He just wanted to Drake anyway. Yeah, kind of like a bluff. right? It's kind of like a bluff, but it worked out really well. Exactly. I mean, it wasn't a bluff. But it's just well, you know, he needed he to dump his hand, otherwise he would overdraw. This card. Oh, BGH. That's pretty BGH, good. That's Although gonna be useful. Yeah, gonna kill there's you. a Ragnaros in Ardius kind. Okay, it's Rag. Okay, so that's huge. Um, there's no way you should siphon Soul that. I mean, uh, Hellfire that. Sorry. So, so, so far. Ah, we're, we got there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter the journey as long as we get to the destination, right? Okay. So oh, shield no, block, execute. shield slam. That's a nice combo. Unfortunately, the Twilight Drake is just too big even for that combo. Well, he had, well, he had to... Uh, uh, Arcanine that, that's so expensive at that point. That's 10 damage. You're, yeah, you're blowing 10 damage on it. Well, the Twilight Drake on turn 5 was a clear indication that there wasn't an average Twilight Drake on 4 mm. and a Mountain Giant. Ooh, an execute. He, he got an execute, which is pretty big. Do you want to... I think you should still do the Shield Slam. Move. Yeah. Because you can save execute for anything as well. Yeah, um, we, especially with Whirlwind here. Yeah, I definitely agree. You want to, yeah. to use the execute for the Giant. Yeah. You're not guaranteed to stick that much armor for a long time. And there is no so giant, scary. and Shansol dropped to 21 health. So it looks like Shansol might have to... Siphon Soul, the one... No, I, no. I don't think I'd Siphon Soul. I'd rather, I'd rather 
play some here? smaller minions? You still can't first your tap, right, with 10 cards. So you can first here and then have to play the Sun Fury? Yeah, and then if, uh, if for example, is able to attack, you still have the Mortal Coil for the following Because this sets turn. up the board better than a Siphon, right? Because yeah. it's better to be this situation than both boards empty. And I guess you want to Siphon so. cards like Argent Commander. Exactly. exactly. Oh, there is a hard Let's look, the Dark Iron Dwarf is able to allow it to trade as well. Okay, that's good. That's interesting. <laughs> Dark Iron Dwarf. Let's see what Shao Soul is able to draw. Still looking for some of those really intimidating minions that Handlock's known for, but another Taunter. Yeah, Shao Soul's Handlock is 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 fairly situational. Like he has Leroy, Arcane, Arcane Golem, Golems. but he hasn't actually drawn any Leroy's and Arcane Golems. He just hasn't been getting in his giants. He's just getting a very clunky hand. Yeah, a very clunky hand. Warlock doesn't want to have. Does he have nine cards here? I mean, you can still tap. He has Alex as well in this deck. If you tap, you'll have. Five mana after. It's kind of awkward. So, goes, goes, just goes ahead and siphons. If he can get in one damage, you can cycle, cycle the Mortal Call. He probably wants to cycle at this point. Yeah, I guess he just stole and uh, siphon still here. Yeah. Yeah. So there are not that many targets map. you want to get rid of, right? Well, uh, there you know that he has Groma. I don't, did he see a rag last turn at all? No. No, I don't think so. Okay, so that still might be a surprise factor. Power only another situational card. Mm. Good thing for Shassel is he is at 26, so he he might just be able to Alex um, RDU next turn in the face. Ah. Oh, nice scroll for him. There we go. So I don't soul think fire. you. Oh, I guess Do you soul, soul fire. Soul fire to Drake. Yeah, you probably the most would. delicious soul fire yeah, target. Yeah. yeah. Does he discard he Alex? Oh. oh! Oh, being a hunter! That is... And now the Ragnaros! Mm -hmm. Wow. So these are Ragnaros here? Well, you just saw I mean, you thought it was lost as BGH. <laughs> Didn't he use a Siphon Soul? It's just like a sign from the heavens. A BGH is out of the way, let's do this. I mean, his opponent does have second Siphon Soul, but you already saw him use two primary forms of removal for the Rag. The problem with Rag, Rag against his Giants is sometimes he just goes for their face and gets them into range for Moltens. Yeah. yeah. So He it needs would, it to hit this Drake, though, because this is going to be a Siphon Soul. Drake. Oh! You know, Rag hasn't been the friend of RDU compared to Amaz. Because now this is this is why I hate Rag against Giants. Actually, this always happens to me too. Oh my goodness! Because now uh, Molten Giants are activated, and this is not what you wanted. You don't think the Siphon Soul is coming out though in response? He might Siphon, but well, do I you mean, really he's probably gonna Siphon. siphon? You can also what, what power can you do? Of power armor. Okay. okay, so if you put a Giant, say you tap Giant for five, you still have four mana. You can you can power roaming trade, but then you're in danger of dying to Grom. I think if you tap. No, you, you, the Grom can't. He's, he has nine mana, so he won't have to be able to get the full twelve from there. Yeah, he's it might. It might mark. make sense for him to just siphon tap. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that he he did this move, what choice does he have? Oh, maybe he's he tap. Cool. He can play both. Well, no, he's gonna siphon slow after that. You can play a, a four. You can play both giants. I was gonna say, but that you're you're playing with so much fire, literally. And well, you, you can't do for. Game. Oh, he's gonna um, Argus. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Man, imagine if RDU had like Brawl or something, and <laughs> <laughs> that would have been pretty crazy. Still, now he has Execute though. Still execute. I don't know if leaving up the Giant is that great. I mean, War has such great hard removal that it's hard to just. Are we going to get like better Siphon Soul targets? Not really. It doesn't get much better than this. It's still awkward though for RDU as well. All right. So what does he want to hit here? The, I think the, that's the, the, Drake. Drake. the Drake. Okay, oh. about time. <laughs> that was huge. RDU has been missing rags all, all series long, pretty much. Shadow flame. Oh, power overwhelming. Still I guess a little he, more juice. He though. also has um the giant shadow flame. Yeah. Ah, you're Giant right. Shire of Flames uh, Morocco also. And he's still out of the Gromash range then, even mm -hmm. with Grill Thusmaster. Mm -hmm. Let's see, if he power overwhelming... You can power Shadow... shadow then you can't can kill the, the Giant other. No, Shadow you'd be, Flame. You'd be short for some mm -hmm. change. Okay, well, he could like Giant Shadow Flame and then Morocco the... the okay, so what is... is he's is he gonna, gonna end up siphoning, I think? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, oh that is okay. cute. <laughs> it's another way to do it. Yeah. And that way he saves his mountain giant. Yeah, exactly. But unfortunately, the mountain giant is expensive now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's not that big, but yeah, it's it's a good move, I think. He gets to heal up, too, and it's definitely see. scary. All right, well, now he can play uh, on the clean board. Let's see what he gets from it. If he plays Drakes, he's not going to whirlwind. Okay, so he's charging. Charging the 2 1. The 2 1, or is he going for the face? You know one Molten's gone. Right, he also just saw a Mortal Coil as well, though. Mm. So maybe he feels more confident. So there is uh, Hellfire, I mean, uh, Soulfire still. Do you tap to something? Do you just Alex and then Soulfire? No, fire? You c if, you soul f if you if you soul fire right after you you tap, then you still put yourself within range if you can't kill. I guess the problem with Soulfire is it, if you Alex Soulfire, your giants are pretty much never going to be played. He, I guess he will still tap, right? But if he taps and he's not able, if and his taps, opponent has the, actually either way, he's not able to set up a taunt either way. So if he tap, uh -huh. it, so if he taps, it's kind of a, uh, um, the only difference is if Gromash can't get activated by Cool Task versus something like Slam or Whirlwind. That's the only difference. Well, so it looks like he's going for the Alex play. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, he's going for Alex. Okay, and trust his opponent doesn't have. The two cards he needs, Siphon gets discarded. That was probably one of his worst. The Argus is actually the worst. Yeah. To get discarded. But Siphon was his, Siphon is better than the Giants here. Ooh, oh, Shield Sun. Does that matter? It's not enough. Well, he will be able to kill I guess he will be Alex. able to remove. So that is actually a huge draw. Because he can trade now. Yeah. And he's still going to, he's going to be able to reset the board pretty much. Harrison Jones. Uh. Probably, or Harv's Golem. He's waiting Harv's for Jaraxxus. He, he did use both Soul Fires, though. Mm -hmm. well, so you feel more confident about it. Harv's Golem and Dark Iron Dwarf. Dark Iron. That, yeah. that gives him more power. Harrison for Jaraxxus. Yeah. <laughs> this game is really tight. Wow. Expensive Molten Giants. <laughs> he can still tap. Oh, or, uh, oh Mountain Giants, excuse me. Now he can but just speak play it and uh, mm -hmm. taunt it even. I think... Shastel is playing too safe all these yeah. turns. He should have a fairly good read about no Grom, so maybe he should just go a little bit more greedier. I if guess I he's... This is, this is kind of reasonable. Okay. This way he taps and... Alright. Are you need some kind of removal. Did he use a second execute? Okay, so that's enough okay. to remove. That's yeah. okay, that's you said. The uh, Whirlwind actually gives him a full board clear if you wanted to. And now, RDU is once again dealt with another threat. No more Molten Giants, so he can pretty much go ham. Although, pretty much that's what he's been doing. <laughs> he has six damage. Um, Leroy. Ten damage now. I guess he's Giant YOLO. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you're, you're clear, six, your turns are pretty clear. He's a damage, right? This burst is coming from the hand. It's only Shield coming block. from one direction. Shieldlock is not bad. Shieldlock is good. It can't trips. Oh! oh! Execute. And then you play Harrison Jones. Yeah. Well. And now you're kind of threatening lethal better. Yeah, just need one more point of damage. I mean, at that point, Jarax is. <laughs> <laughs> he would have played it, probably. Oh. Mm, that's a dead draw. The thing is, and he can't, even can't tap do now. one damage that easily. Right, he needs to draw a, a, cool task, that a weapon or Gromash off the top. He might actually Arcane Golem one. Yeah, Arcane yeah. Golem, yeah. Remove the Harrison Jones. By doing that, then the mountain okay, giant Okay, so you want to tap instead. if you're going to Arcane Golem, I think. You can tap an Arcane Golem then. Oh, Faceless. Oh, faceless he can remove both. Wow. Yeah. I this think you go for it because already has zero cards in his hand. You don't need the burst. You can just win the game with one Molten Giant, I mean, yeah. one Mountain Giant, right? Already has zero cards, so if he has, if he draws a Junk card and you just drop the Giant, you probably just win. That's that is true. You know, Giant, that is <laughs> giant true. will kill will kill you over a couple turns. Because I think trying to save it for burst. No, no way. He's too idealistic. Burst here. It's too idealistic. You know, the already has zero cards in his hand. But you're saving for burst. What it does is it plays a long-term game. It gives you already uh, the opportunity to draw into potential lethal as well. If you say if he has, like, a uh, uh, Arcanite Reaper the next turn, you give. Well, it two also, turns to play. if you don't face this, you just drop a giant next turn. How are you gonna deal with the? How are you gonna deal with it anyways next turn? You still can't leave it up over two turns. That is true. I think so he's, he's just gonna, gonna face the board too. Oh. oh wow. Really? He will try. What does to... he see that we don't right now? 
Oh my goodness. RDU might be able to win off the top of his deck. And... Oh. No. Oh, man. But I don't see but... what the point of that. That's a useless card. Yeah. Now the faceless. Unless he gets a down He already used the power overwhelming as well. So it's not like there's like insane combo potential. Oh. Wow, a huge taunt. But there's that is that is a great draw. I think he faceless the taunt. I mean, it would have been better to do it the other way still. Because if he didn't do that and he was at eight, he could have just dropped a giant. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I absolutely think you need to set up <laughs> as much defenses as possible. Yeah. Rally the troops. Shasso has used his Alex on RDU's mm. face. Oh, that's a cruel task. Nice. He cruel task the to draw. I yeah. Think. Even though it's weird, actually. It does allow you to cruel task, kill one. I still think it's better draw. It has to be better so. draw. Seven cards left. You know, oddly Four enough, run. if his opponent can't kill him, he also might fatigue himself to death. Oh, oh no. second Argent Commander. This is still awkward, but. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's pretty good for him, right? I guess you are just so much charge. Yeah. Shansou is kind of like depressed, I guess. Let's see what Shansou is able to draw at the top. He needs something. Use Alex. Oh, oh wow. he, oh, he picks up a Sun Fury protector. This is huge. <laughs> wow. Do you just tap? Because two and four is is it that different? How much cards does he have left? He has three cards left. Oh, three cards. Maybe you don't have. <laughs> <just gonna> kill <laughs> he has uh, three cards left. He, keep in mind, Xiao So is the only Chinese player left to represent I the whole country. I think he's thinking about just playing the giant here. But I, then he dies. Yeah, I because mean, because like, what's the chance that there is like damage? Mm -hmm. If there's I no damage, the, the chance is better. Actually... Oh, he taps. Oh, oh he has a Shadow even Flame. Better. He's it's able even to get better. the board clear. You can Leroy Shadow Flame? He can Leroy Shadow Flame. Wait, you can Leroy Shadow Flame the, the something the, else. Yeah, the Ancient, or you, the ancient Watcher. The Ancient Watcher. Wait, is uh, that... Nope. I think that's a mistake. Okay. He should just have from the He wants to use it as a ta uh, the taunt. I know, but I mean... It still but, seems but now he picks up a weapon, it's over. Oh, oh yes. So, yeah, it's, it's not over useless. Yet. It's not useless. There's a there's a giant. Yes, the giant <laughs> is coming. Oh, oh, oh man. And then he used Leroy already. He might have run out of damage. Oh. He might run out of damage. He, he should have kept he, he might have no way to actually kill his opponent. The Leroy. Oh my god, we oh, forgot wow. the the, the no, ancient watch activation. I think it's still not enough because he he has only one card left and he's Yeah, dead. he's gonna fatigue himself he's to death in two turns. So he has to play a giant, but then he's gonna get BGH. Does RDU have another Fiery War Axe also? Because he only has four cards left as well. So well, he has he another still weapon. Has Grom as well. So if oh. he doesn't taunt, he might just win. There's like a 50% chance to win right now. Oh, oh he gets it! RDU fist pumps in victory, and he's going to the semifinals. RDU makes it. China goes home without a top four finish. And RDU survives to day number three. He can't believe it. He that was on the verge of defeat. That was a tough match. That and was like the, <laughs> still the last card almost. I I, I am sweating. Uh, serious. One, it's hot, but two, because RDU was that close to being eliminated. And now we have a date with the number one ranked Ghosty Gamer spot in contention because Amaz and RDU will face off tomorrow for a final spot. I was waiting for that match. I want to see it. I'm so excited to see it. We'll have it tomorrow. Well, I, I am I am very, very happy with how that series turned out. Shao Soul, you know, he took a lot of risks on the line that he wanted to, but in the end, a lot of those things, it's just 50-50. You either choose a line where it pays off or it doesn't. And, you know, I, I think uh, when you <laughs> when it comes down to those last plays, the Leroy, Shadow Flames, and whatnot, all those things ended up not mattering because in the grand scheme of things, you needed to play things immediately at the top. Shrifeco, give me some of your last thoughts because we have to kind of wrap up here. We're running late, but that was a hell of a series. Yeah, that series. There's so many nil better games. There's that last game. There's the game before that. There's the game before that. It was, <laughs> yeah. that was crazy. The Druid games, <laughs> the, games. the War games. <laughs> RDU making a comeback. Nimsh, give me some final thoughts here. Oh, man, that was so exciting. Um, great series. I think RDU is super happy, and Shell Soul is just uh, going home with that salt, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I, we had a great day yeah. today, so I'm really excited for tomorrow. And All right, cool. So 
We do have to close up. We wish we could interview order you, but we got to go and pack it up. But we'll be back for day three of Intel Extreme Masters at Shenzhen China tomorrow. Make sure to, again, f join the conversation, follow us on Twitter, and find out what time we're going to be broadcasting. It'll, again, be based off of how StarCraft's able to finish as well. So same time, same place. We'll see you guys next time. This has been Frodan, Nips, and Strife Crow with Intel Extreme Masters. We'll see you guys tomorrow.